So I want to start here uh, with the fact that we are in Qatar. Uh, it is our host city. And Rwanda in particular has, has called Qatar a strategic partner. Um, you've talked about how you want to enhance the relationship with uh, this host country. Talk to us about what that looks like for you in the next few years. Well, first of all, you have to be aware of the world we live in. And uh, in it, we have to invest and grow. And uh, there's no country that can manage that alone, and uh, particularly for a small country like mine. Uh, we therefore have to be uh, having a vision of what you want to do, and then uh, forge these partnerships. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, indeed, uh, you've pointed to one of the uh, strongest partners we have uh, for Rwanda and for Africa, actually, mm. is uh, Qatar. And uh, it was um, a partnership of choice uh, mm. that we made. We scan across the world. We, there is this region, mm -hmm. the Gulf region, uh, and you know there has been, uh, um, it's very clear if you look up to the Gulf region, India, Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. uh, on the map, certainly uh, these are uh, uh, growth leaders right. uh, and, and also provide, therefore, a huge opportunity. Right. And therefore, for us, uh, there are key areas mm -hmm. we, we look at when we are trying to make these investments. Where it is, um, and, and we are looking at uh, market leaders right. in different areas. Right. Uh, for example, with the Qatar, uh, we are partnering in uh, aviation. Right. Uh, Qatar Airways is a leader in this uh, uh, sector. Right. Uh, and we have been looking at uh, other areas where we can work together uh, with other countries, but uh, we have the opportunity to work very strongly with... Right, and we Qatar. saw Qatar Airways actually open up the first cargo hub um, in Rwanda, but there's also a plan for Qatar uh, to partner with Rwanda for an airport. Can you talk to us about where you're at in, in negotiations when uh, we'll actually see the building begin? Um, we've, we've done all that with the negotiations and we are actually implementing what has been done. We are partnering in the, the airline but also uh, in the uh, airport uh, right. that we are jointly investing in. Mm -hmm. uh, work is in progress. Uh, we've gone a long way. We're just trying to speed it up to make sure that uh, uh, we, we are already up and running. What in, could we in potentially time. see by the end of this year in terms of development with this airport? By the end of the year, say, the airline is very strong already. It's, it's growing very fast. The airport, maybe we should be around 70% of that done. And I guess in the next year, uh, sometime in the third or fourth quarter, we need to, we shall be seeing things standing and going. And, and we know, I mean, you mentioned some of the partners that Rwanda is working with. I think it's, it's all clear to everyone uh, just how much of a tourism and investment uh, destination that Rwanda has become. You mentioned the Qatar Airways partnership. Uh, there was also the renewed partnership with the Premier League team, PSG. Some of your critics, though, say that a lot of these partnerships are just to mask some of the human rights concerns in the country. I mean, what, what do you say to that? Well, I would have been surprised if you didn't bring that up, because that's uh, the talking point of uh, <laughs> every... But this is discussion is about uh, economic partnerships, it's about growth, it's about... So let me tell you briefly what we are about. Uh, I mentioned that uh, we are seeking partnerships with uh, uh, market leaders. Right. We talked about um, aviation. We have invested also in uh, and with Europe in uh, biotechnology. We have, in fact, uh, we are now manufacturing, beginning to manufacture, maybe starting with August, uh, vaccines. We are working with uh, BioNTech. 
Yes, we are also partnering with the NBA for Basketball Africa League, which is uh, best in Rwanda, uh, and so on and so forth. So, the, in fact, by making progress on this front, the economic front, and the providing for our people, we are dealing with human rights issues. We are, because uh, the basic thing is the needs of people, that's what we are looking at. Mm. The second sec area we are looking at is uh, innovation and startups. Mm. And we are having partnerships in these areas as well. For example, with innovation and uh, the startups, we have um, uh, one of a kind for drone uh, precision delivery. Right. You have heard of a company called uh, Zipline, yep. which started in Rwanda, and we are working together, and it's a company that is growing uh, uh, across the continent and uh, beyond. And then you have uh, Noshken. Uh, it's a Swedish company. It has established a hub in the East African right. region. And we, uh, they are helping startup companies, uh, and they have created a, a technology hub in Kigali. So really, this is uh, the medicine for um, answering the human rights question. Is it the medicine, though? Because we've heard from a number uh, of countries talk about just how concerned they are about um, the stability of the region in particular when it comes to Rwanda and Congo and the human rights situation. So, so is, it, is it the medicine? I mean, what is it that you're actually doing for the local communities there to, to better the situation and not spill out into an all-out war? It's the medicine because uh, we may not uh, be able to stop uh, problems of instability uh, anywhere in the world, they have different causes and they have to be addressed differently. Uh, as you see across the world, in actual fact, uh, yeah. but you are talking about Rwanda or our region. I, 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 I don't think you imagine that uh, the source of instability of the region uh, whether it is Sudan or Somalia or beyond, like in Central African Republic or terrorism we had in Mozambique, is all coming from Rwanda. I don't think so. But for the problems between uh, uh, Rwanda and uh, DRC, uh, that has a process that is uh, addressing that. Where is the process at right now? The process uh, is uh, led by Angola uh, and also the East African region. Uh, we have two processes, one of Nairobi, another of Luanda in, Ango in Angola. Mm -hmm. And these discussions are going on. In fact, the African Union itself is uh, dealing with the matter. Uh, and the UN, which has been there for the last 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, you would imagine maybe with the amount of money spent there and the time spent, mm. we would actually not be having problems uh, since uh, uh, the UN is a leader in uh, trying to help to right. create peace. Are you willing to meet with President Felix Shikidi about the, the conflict that's happening? We have met many times over that, and we shall continue, but I have indicated to you that uh, we uh, have frameworks in which we are working. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't uh, know of any problem that you have in your mind about meeting, but I've, we've been meeting several times. Do you see the conflict coming to an end um, Soon. I mean, Rwanda is going to have elections next year. I mean, is, is this something that you're committed to seeing end while you're still in office? I'm wondering if you're imagining that if there is a, a, a problem like that involving countries or people and for uh, different sorts of causes, that there is one person that has the key to addressing the issue. But uh, maybe one person or one country 
is part of the solution, but is not the solution, but they will contribute to that. So I think maybe we can uh, continue with the, 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 the discussion in the context of why we are here, and then we uh, leave the matters to be handled by those who are already handling it. Let's also talk about, because uh, you, you mentioned we are here, the Qatar Economic Forum. Um, Rwanda has, a, at a time when a lot of African countries have not been able to pay back debt, um, has been able to pay back a $400 million euro bond. Um, do you see the potentially going, do you see the country potentially going back to the international market soon? I mean, what, what is it that you are having discussions with your officials? Whenever there is a need, we will always go back. Uh, How much would you has. be? Well, it depends on the problem we want to address. Uh, maybe, but we don't go back maybe for the same, we go back for more because we've been growing. Of, uh, we, we have investments to make in infrastructure. We have uh, investments to make uh, in the area of manufacturing, as I have mentioned to you. Yep. Uh, we are busy building a country, so we will we, we need resources, which will always not be available uh, until we go to the market. So we, 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 first of all, we wanted and we have been able to establish ourselves as uh, people that are reliable, that can pay our debt. Uh, that, that's key. So we want to build on that and continue doing more. We, we don't go to the market or borrow for the sake of it. We want to invest in those uh, sectors I have mentioned to you that will have good returns uh, and justify our investments and also uh, contribute to the well-being and the development of our people. There's a lot of concern though when we talk about uh, investment and extending financing with African countries um, that there, there's unfair treatment when it comes to financing. Do you think developed uh, economies need to rethink how they're extending financing to African countries, especially when you consider, you know, what's happening in Ghana and Zambia. I mean, do you think there needs to be a rethinking of, of how this is working? Well, we need to be rethinking, but we also need to be finding ways of uh, doing better than probably we have had in the past. And part of it I have just mentioned, uh, and that is the borrowers and the lenders have to be focusing on that which uh, makes sense uh, to them, uh, especially the, uh, the borrowers have to, which areas do you really want to cover? Where do you want to invest this money so that uh, you can easily see uh, predictability in the so growth So it's more on the, the borrowers, less it's on both. the lenders. It is always going to be a conversation. It takes a conversation to get things clear. But um, in terms for Africa, when you look at the setup of things across the world, uh, and when you see uh, what happened during uh, COVID, mm -hmm. for example, and the effects it had, and then climate change issues affecting, uh, converging on that, um, you, you, and, and when you, how we came out uh, COVID, mm -hmm. There was, for example, a discussion as to how the CDRs would be used to right. fill the gap. Uh, well, there was agreement that that is the case. The special drawing rights should be looked upon to alleviate on some of the problems. But um, Africa had a very small part uh, share of that, and that is about 33 billion, mm -hmm. when actually the estimated amount would have gone over 100 billion. But at the same time, money is actually there. Those who go to the drawing rights uh, who drew from that. Right. Um, they didn't even need it. The developed countries didn't need that amount of money. Mm. And the IMF uh, did their best to say we can actually draw from this and uh, support the African uh, uh, struggling economies uh, to, to, to come up 
which, by the way, has impact on the you know, uh, overall global growth, right. if it really came up well. So there has been a discussion, endless discussion about this, and we haven't come to the point where we can tap into this. So there is a, a discussion that must be held that actually is aimed at resolving issues rather than just dilly-dallying over them and uh, uh, continuing with the same problem. Right. And before we wrap up, I, I wanted to ask you uh, about the UK migrant uh, situation and, and um, its, its partnership with Rwanda. Um, we heard from a UN agency saying that sending asylum seekers may potentially put them in harm. I mean, wh why is it that, that you're so keen on, on this deal? What is the benefit that you see uh, in this for Rwanda? Well, first of all, we, we, we did not uh, really beg anybody to work with us or to send migrants to, to Rwanda. It's, it's an idea that developed to solve a problem. And migrant uh, issues are, are about uh, human capital gaps that exist and have these movements, uh, but the origin can also be instability in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, the partnership, therefore, was forged around saying, how do you address this problem? Uh, and there, there came a, a, a development partnership around that. Mm -hmm. Uh, which would mean resettling the migrants who need to, to settle down and, you know, have the freedom to do what they want to do in places that they are, they are stable. And um, in fact, the U current UK uh, migration problem that is being talked about came later. Mm. We started with the resettling and receiving people from Libya who were stuck in Libya uh, because of instability that developed in Libya, and there are many African Africans coming from different parts of Africa right. caught up in Libya heading to Europe. Right. And uh, we have, that it started in 2018, right. and we have had a number of them brought to Rwanda, processed, some stay, others have gone to different countries. Mm -hmm but it was done proper and saved the thousands of lives mm -hmm. who were caught up in that situation. So from that, learning from that, that is how the uh, UK and there are other actually European countries that have been contacting us right. to, to address this. Other European countries? Yes. Looking there, into there this. So, so before we, I mean, we were a little bit over time. Do you see this UK situation potentially going through by the end of the year? Do you believe that migrants uh, will actually start being sent to, to Rwanda by the end of 2023? Well, maybe a bigger part of the question should go to UK because uh, uh, for us to receive them and process them working with UK, we are ready. Uh, UK has to be ready on their part and that's how it works and for overall good results. All right, great. We have to leave it there, Your Excellency. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much.